Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Town of Monroe Planning and Zoning Commission regular meetings for April the 20th, 2023, 703 p.m. If you'll please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> okay. Thank you, first. Uh, thank you. We will uh, call the roll at this point, starting on my right. Dominic Smergolino, alternate commissioner. Dominic Benicia, alternate. Brian Townding, commissioner. Leanne Brody, commissioner. Michael Riley, chairman. Bruno Maini, commissioner. Rick Schultz, G administrator. And do we have a Sarah? Do we have Sarah? There. Sarah, are you there? Nope. Okay. That's why we videotape and record. So Sarah can get the, uh, yeah. the recording. All right, good. We'll have Bill Batar take our minutes tonight. So we are now <laughs> general public participation. Sometimes he does. <laughs> uh, is there anyone here tonight that would like to speak to the um, mission? Anybody here online that would like to speak to the commission on any matters? I see you have just a name and uh, address for the record. Sure. Uh, good evening, members of the commission. For the record. My name is Kevin Soley. I'm a licensed professional engineer and state facility engineering officer here in Monroe. Um, we've been working with staff, and we just were hoping to have an informal discussion with the commission about a um, project that was recently on the commission's agenda, but it no longer is. Uh, it's been acted upon. Um, and that's the, the project, the property in, on Garden Road. Um, so we just kind of want to, and Rick, I don't know if now's the time to, to have this discussion, I think probably. Not, not in great detail. Uh, yeah. We're going to schedule a uh, zoning regulations subcommittee, which would be the appropriate time. That'll be in a couple of weeks. Okay. Well, um, I think we'll just, if, if we can, because it is public participation, we'd just like to do a high level um, inquiry from an, in an informal basis. Um, you know, obviously, we were recently before the commission for an excavation permit application for 125, 125 Garter Road. Um, and throughout the process, uh, we tried to make uh, modifications to the plan and the application materials to be responsive to the comments raised during the commission during the hearings. And then ultimately, that application was denied. Um, and it caught us a little bit off guard because we felt like we were trying to be responsive with the commission, but ultimately, we saw the commission had a different opinion um, on that application. So, um, you know, obviously, on our, our client's behalf, who obviously isn't here, um, you know, he has a piece of property that had been worked on previously. It had been scarred, I'll say, because it was excavated. It was left in a state of disrepair, and he was trying to get it to a place where it could be productive again. Um, we understand that the plan that we proposed wasn't obviously viewed favorably, but we were, we were wondering if the commission could provide some maybe informal feedback on if there's another... Uh, way that the commission would like to see that developed. And as we went back and read through the minutes again and watched the tapes again, because we wanted to see if we missed something, it seemed to, see, it seemed to be that there was some concern regarding a future industrial use on that property. Now the property is zoned industrial, so we really don't have much options without changing the zone. Um, but we think given the character of the location and the site itself, Perhaps the commission may view it, uh, an application more favorably if it resulted in a change of that zone from industrial to residential. So um, we'll pull something up quickly. So we just kind of wanted to see if the commission could offer some informal feedback. If we were to come in with an application that um, included a potential future zone change of the property to residential, we believe the property could be subdivided into four single family residential lots, you know, which we think that would be um, more in line with the character of Garter Road itself, as it is a residential um, a, a scenic road. It's a little bit interesting because there's residential on the one side, but it's industrial on the other. 
but we think that something like this perhaps would be you know, more in line with what the commission may want to see. And, and if it is, we would still need to go through a process of an excavation permit application before we could officially change the zone because from a processing standpoint, this commission knows we wouldn't be able to remove and process that material um, if it was changed first. So we would have to come in with an excavation film build permit application, but what we would propose to do is include this as a potential development plan. And then we think the commission could include the condition that the property needs to be changed to residential, you know, at the completion of the excavation, which our applicant, which our client would be willing to do. We just kind of wanted to see if, if something like this may be viewed more favorably by the commission if we were to come back in with an excavation permit application. Anything else? That was it. All right, thank you very much. We'll take this into consideration and we'll meet with you at uh, the subcommittee level. Okay. Thank you. Is there anyone else here tonight that uh, would like to adjust? <coughs> anyone online? Seeing none, we're gonna to move to our first public hearing. This is a continuation. This is SCP 2023 05, file number 1653A, 1565 Monroe Turnpike. Uh, Rick, do we have any new exhibits? Yes, I do, Mr. Chairman, from the uh, fire marshal dated uh, April 18th, 2023, uh, restricting the capacity to 50. That was represented by the applicant, no more than 50, the fire marshals. Official position is 50, up to 50. That is all. Thank you. And for the applicant, name and address, please. Sure. Um, my name is uh, Dwight Hall. I reside in uh, Amity, Connecticut, uh, 81 Shepherd Ave, Amity, Connecticut. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, from our prior meeting, uh, I think we hit a lot of points already. I think we were just waiting for the house director. Uh, to sign off on uh, one more item. Uh, other than that, I think, I think we're all set. Did they sign off? From what I understand, yes. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Oh, good. Uh -huh. And we'll set. Okay. Um, does anybody have any questions for the applicant? We, we will be deliberating on this in a little while. Okay. We'll have an answer. All right. Awesome. All right. Thank you. So, would you like to close the hearing? Uh, do we have to open it up to the public? Yeah. Yes. No. Yeah. All right, formality. Any uh, members of the public here tonight that would like to comment on this application? If not in the room, anyone online? Good. I don't see anyone who'd like to close the hearing. Sure. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty excited by this opportunity to uh, bring something new to the area um, in a different format. Um, it, you know, kind of bring some energy to uh, what's already there. Um, you know, I plan to be very responsible, uh, making sure that it's a one of a kind space, very unique, very, very basic, uh, but effective and something that it will bring something better to the community. Uh, and we know everything goes well. Yeah. All right, thank you. Thank the hearing you. is now closed. <laughs> Moving along, we have site development plan. 97 Josie's Ring Road. Um, yeah, Mr. Chairman, that is going to be continued to May 4th. They're still working with the health department. They will be installing a separate septic system for that detached accessory dwelling unit. Okay. We have a new subdivision application, SUB 2023-02, file number one, two, one C, Ad Brown Road. We have uh, the exhibits. Mr. Chairman, uh, we have uh, exhibit one uh, application and plan set. Two, health department review. Three, the uh, appraisal report. The applicant is requesting payment in lieu of insofar as you will see tonight, the property is surrounded by all individual lots. They are <clears throat> requesting this commission 
to consider payment in lieu of the uh, appraisal came in at uh, 150,000. 10% of that is 15,000. And if you approve it, it will go to the open space trust fund. Where the number come up for 100? 150,000. Wow. For the, the, uh, uh, the value of the property, excluding buildings and structures. It's essentially the raw value of the land. This is by state statute. And who makes that decision? <clears throat> well, you review the appraisal. The appraisal has been submitted, and you decide on whether or not you want 10% space conveyed to the town or, or payment in lieu of. They are requesting payment in lieu of. You gave the appraisal. <clears throat> Jason, I'll take it from you. You there? Okay. The applicant? Good evening. Uh, for the record, uh, Jason Edwards, J. Edwards Associates, Engineer Surveyors, 247 Stephanie Road, Easton. This is uh, a four lot subdivision, probably in the country in the States. This is our, actually a resubdivision on 33 Bangalore Road. That parcel, this thing is a 8.9 acre parcel uh, with an existing house that was built in the 40s. It's got a, a barn here, newer, that's probably from the 90s. Uh, there's also a uh, garage here. Uh, swing pool that's going to be abandoned, and then another out building here that will be abandoned. Uh, we are proposing to divide this into four lots. Uh, one with the existing home that uh, would be ten as a separate lot, and then have uh, two rear lots. One uh, that would go to the north here, and then to the south. The southern lot would keep that existing barn on it. Uh, we also have a, have a uh, location identified for a house there as well. Um, we did do soil testing with the health department. Lots. We uh, demonstrated uh, septic feasibility, well locations, and, and house locations. We do have a letter from the health department uh, stating that. Um, so we'd have the two rear lots would be accessed by separate driveways, and then we'd have an individual driveway access to this lot. Uh, the existing house would, would retain its current driveway and access. As uh, Rick stated, we are requesting a fee in lieu of open space. Um, this is surrounded by you know, individual homes, uh, so there really isn't anything to be continuous with as far as open space, 10% in the small parcel. What's behind it? Uh, there's homes there. Uh, I That's connected. There's a, a house here. Right here. Which is the property you're talking about? Where this is our piece here. These parcel lines are not drawn accurately. It's not from the town. But uh, the existing house is here, the barn is here, and uh, the new lots would be in this area. Two acres down here? It's two acres down here, Rick? Yes. yes. We do have uh, stormwater um, uh, controls depicted on all the lots, and, and none of this would be um, part of the real subdivision approval. All that work would be done on an individual lot basis. All the stormwater controls are on the lots, so when someone came in to develop the lot, they'd have to get a building permit that would include stormwater controls per the zoning regulations. So there's no, no subdivision improvement per se on this. Everything's individual. That makes sense. Um, How many driveways you got together? Four total together? Total of three driveways. Oh, four, three new driveways. One, one existing. Yeah, one's existing. So you've got one new driveway here, one new driveway here, and then one short driveway here. 
What's the width of the driveway? And the access way to 25, I think, is 12 foot wide driveway. So those are two separate driveways with something run, running down the middle as opposed to one shared driveway? Yeah, that's the way the, uh, the applicant preferred it. It keeps it so the lots can be sold individually and uh, the owner wouldn't have to build that access drive himself. Something new. This is from the regulation that we passed with the interior lots. Yeah, yeah it doesn't meet that regulation. That's why you get driveways like that. Mr. Chairman, uh, I have some comments when uh, I'm ready, uh, Jason. Uh, yeah, I think I've touched on everything. Uh, so, go ahead. All right, as the applicant indicated, you have uh, two interior lots side by side. Uh, those skinny, narrow strips are called fee strips. Now, the commission has complete control on the design. You can allow these back to back driveways, or you can impose a condition by having a common driveway and then it forks out. Um, Jason, I forgot to mention to you, we're still awaiting uh, uh, the comments from the uh, town engineer. Okay. Uh, but Mr. Chairman, you have uh, really two distinct issues that you need to uh, convey to the uh, applicant and staff, the payment in lieu of, and how you want those two uh, driveways uh, uh, designed. Yeah, I don't think I want four of them together. It's not four. It's two driveways three. together. No, it's, it's three. Three. But no, there's not one existing. How many driveways are total there? Four? There's going to be four total driveways. And that, and that, and that's, uh, no, this is only going to serve as two. Lots. One there? There's two, two there. There's two up here, there's one up here, and then the existing is way down here. So, so you'd have three, three new driveways. Two of them would be right next to each other and servicing just the two lots that are in the mirror. So the question is whether to combine the two. It's always a good idea to lessen the number of curb cuts for the obvious reason. And uh, I don't know, Jason, if uh, that's something you're. Uh, We'd be willing to, to accept that if that's what the commission prefers, but. It's a, it's a common design solution. You have one wide no, uh, uh, you know, curb cut and then it forks. The, the downside to that uh, from one from the developer standpoint and from future is that you then have a shared element there that two owners are going to have to negotiate on maintenance and plowing. It's only two people, not the end of the world, but it's, you know, there is a downside. It is, a, if I could add, it is a short area because you're plowing down. So one of the two is going to do it first, but uh, uh, in my experience, uh, it's something that the commission really should look uh, favorably at, eliminating curb cuts. For the obvious reason. Okay, so we got to come up with a new plan. They're asking us to make it to, to come up with you control all aspects of interior lots. <laughs> if we like, maybe we like the two lots next to each other. Yeah, <laughs> they can rock paper scissors shoot who well, let's out talk first. About it then. <laughs> so that's my uh, concern. What happens if you're both leaving so at the same time? You're next to each other. Uh, yeah, oh, Dominic. So we did. Uh, okay. <laughs> yes. Um, so let's talk about it then. Uh, is, are you done presenting? I, I am. Do you have any questions? Um, how much space would be between the two driveways in the middle? Uh, right there, there's about, uh, about 15 feet in between. 15 feet? It's a lot. Yeah. 12, 15 minutes. Like that. Okay. You got a 50 foot wide strip there, and you're putting two 12 foot strips in it, so you've got another extra, you know, 20. 25 plus feet totally. You know, not necessarily between, but you know, green space. It would look horrible to have one 50 foot driveway. What do you think about a shared driveway? If, I do a, if you do a shared driveway, then you have to worry about an easement because yeah. who's going to maintain the driveway? There would be easements on the driveway, yeah. Each one would have an easement. That's complicated for the homeowner, right? On a driveway. And they, yeah, just for that short period. Separating. What about the drainage from these driveways? No. You're saying you're going to leave this up to each individual. Well, can we let Dominic finish? Oh, finish Dominic. I'm sorry. Well, I didn't get onto that. Mike got onto that. I understand, but let Dominic finish, then Ryan can go. Or Dominic can go. I was just going to say, uh, what, uh, if they were separate, would they be planting in the middle to kind of keep from the? I mean, it would be up to the, the homeowners. Uh, they would have to come in for individual building permits on each one. 
they would address drainage and utilities and draining and all that lot by lot as they came in for building permits. But Mr. Chairman, once again, the commission controls <coughs> design. I've seen commissions add landscaping if you want to separate it with landscaping. Right. Yeah, we'd be open to that if that's something the commission. Right. You know, low growing because you can't obstruct sight. <laughs> All right. No, I just be worried about the water. From now on, just start with Leon. I'll wash out without, right without trees. And, and it was yeah. right. Yes, it was. I mean, I think it would look nicer, probably two separate, right? Rather than a. Good. Dominic? I have no questions. Um, I have no questions. Yeah, I'm, I'm a firm believer that we need to, I, I don't want to leave it up to individual property owners to, to decide what's going to go on here. Is that going to happen? That's, that I don't want to happen. So I, I believe that you should have something like some kind of landscaping, stuff like that in the middle of it. And so I mean, the other thing is, is this is already advertised for three months that this has been approved. As a subdivision, I mean, I saw that. I mean, I looked it up, and it, it, that popped up. That this is they're already selling lots. Yeah, that's that's. I'm not sure the legality of this. Even so approved. That's not me, so I will have to talk to my client about that. Yeah. Well, it's out there. Believe me, I yeah. tell you, it's out there. Okay. I have an issue when, dark, yeah. when that's out there, like this is already approved, and this, this is not approved. I agree. Right? Yeah. And so there's a couple of things you're going to have to do here, and come in with a better plan because you know. <clears throat> I don't want the driveways to be together like like it is without putting some kind of landscaping or something sure. in that. You put some, some buffer in there. Right. And then come back with a plan with all that on there. And yeah, we have to wait for town engineer comments. Oh, yeah, so we'll be coming back in two weeks. How do you feel about um, the fee and lieu of versus the... Um, I think what? the fee and lieu of is fine. Sorry, I didn't know if he'd instead of here. Where does that go to the <laughs> I know, I know. Does that go to the general town fund? Or the no, we have a special uh, open space trust fund. Right. Do we get a fund in the FIA? Do we do our own appraisal or we no. go by their appraisal? No, you, you review theirs done by a professional. Right. Obviously, if you have an issue with it, the, the, you can ask for another one. Okay. Uh, the onus on the cost is the applicant. So how much would we have, if, the, if, if we were going to have open space there, how much open space would we require? 10%. 10%. So what would that end up being? What's the acreage? It's uh, just under nine acres. You'd have 0. 0.9 acres. So we take an acre. Maker. 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 But there's no really good place to put it. Oh, no, I got it in the middle of nowhere. And then you have to provide access from the road. No, so. not all that. Do. I know that. What do we want the land for? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, you're just, uh, I was just talking to throw. The appraisal part of it, you know. The appraisal, just to remind you, because I, I did a lot of these in Shelton. <clears throat> the appraisal always seems a lot lower because it's excluding building structure. It's really land in the raw. Mm -hmm. Within our requirement. How much money would they be paying? If, uh, uh, 15,000. So there's the appraisal rate. For a lot? Did you no, say? total. Total? 10% of the appraisal. Yeah, got that down here. Oh, and one more thing, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, but the appraisal is 150 per lot. No, it's 150 total of the property, of the nine acres. That's great. So that's based on the definition. That's why it, it seems strange, but it's based on the definition of the, the state's whole, property. Because non-developed. So the whole property is undeveloped. Yeah. Is worth nine, nine acres, thousand, fifty. That, according to that appraisal. That's I keep, they I can't count kind of loaded. They can't count as just the area. So yeah. that's yeah. I run into that with my personal property before too, where they they, they kind of load all those because they don't have the money to develop it. They don't have the appraiser doesn't have a way to apply that. We have, but well, you don't apply it. You, you're you're praising it in the raw. Yeah. And also, too, Mr. Chairman, there's a second component to the payment of lieu, uh, lieu of. The applicant can request. Uh, payment for each lot when it's conveyed out. So there's four lots. So 15,000 divided by four, or you can do a lump sum. Most commissioners like to see the lump sum and, and get it all at once <clears throat> for the obvious reason. So that's another thing. If you can ask your- uh, Yeah, we'd be fine either way. Yeah, we'd probably, we'd probably get yeah. it all at once. I'm fine. I didn't hear you, I'm sorry. We would like to get it at lump sum. Can we, can we have that paid on the sale of the first lot or does it get paid? 
at the time of uh, recording of the map. Okay. Call, Mr. Chairman. Um, I I definitely um, I definitely believe there should be two two driveways. Have each homeowner responsible for their own. Um, my only question is, since we haven't heard from the town engineer, but is would you say it's twelve feet wide the driveway? Yeah. And that's wide enough for I EMS the and yeah. yeah, that's standard. Our regulation. But since we have a little bit more space, wouldn't it be easier? And it's such a how far is it from the street to one of the lots in the back? It's <clears throat> two hundred and thirty plus. So it's about a uh, four hundred feet, probably give or take. Hot dog. That's, that's a lot of asphalt. Mine was six hundred in Southbury. Well, was it really six hundred? Cost me eighty thousand dollars with drainage. Generally speaking, with you know low impact development that the town usually wants, the less pavement, the better. Um, you know, it would increase more. Like we're willing to make them wider if that's what the commission would like. No, it's not more no, wider. wider. Well, I was thinking just because it's four hundred feet from the driveway, just. Well, we could do this sort of pull off, you know, put a, at like 200 feet and have a widening spot so someone could pull off and get around if uh, needed. You know, it's probably a good idea. Thanks. That's anything else? It's a long distance to go. If two cars are coming up, the private driveway. Yeah. It's yeah, it's 12 feet. It's, it's tight. Yeah. It's your driveway, though. It is your, I, I understand that. It's 12 feet, what, six foot per, no, it's 12 feet each driveway. Yeah, so you can get two cars next to each other 12 feet, right? Just saying it's tight and you have, it's not like it's a short distance. It's going 400 feet from front to back. Yeah, and Mr. Chairman, the it's town- It up to 15 feet, I understand, it's- The town engineer will be reviewing drainage impact to the town road and make sure the right of way I'm also thinking it's of comforting with the mess to get down there and so I've seen the way you guys drive, man. Did, did we look into guys have uh, sight line or any of that kind of stuff? Yeah. Yeah, we the mentioned the sight line. I believe. And, the and Liam, that'll be in the report too, to reconfirm it. Okay. Yeah, I'm all for the, the two. I, I think it should be separated with some sort of something in the middle of. Sure. Okay. Right. I yeah, some would, sort of the planted area low shrubs or something. Because yeah, that's exactly it. But I don't like this. The driveway's not for me to run over in the ambulance. Yeah, because you're a horrible driver. You're going to have to come in with a different plan. It shows where you're going to put these plantings. Sure. Where you're going to have draining <laughs> driveways because we don't want to run it off into the town road. I mean, so you're going to have to come up with a plan like that. What's the elevation of the road to the to the uh, to the house? Like road in 475. I mean, roughly, yeah. Uh, this is about level 573. That's 20. Yeah. That's pretty flat there. This lot probably is quite a bit down to here. That's probably another eight feet lower there. So all that water on that driveway is going into the, back to the house. Yeah, most of the flow is going to go back, except for the apron. They have to have some kind of drainage. So they'll, so they'll have to talk. We'll have some drainage out there. That's fine. We can leave it up here. Yeah. Yeah. And when it comes to the approval, that I think you need to put some kind of drainage somewhere. Yep. Along the driveway. Yeah, I had uh, I had six catch basins that went to a, a drainage basin. And Mr. Chairman, if any of the commissioners are Mohegan, you know driving through Shelton, the old Huntington Animal Hospital. Anybody? Yeah. yeah. Four lots are there. Yes. Two interior lots, common driveway. Mm -hmm. this, this when you're driving on Mohegan. And then two regular lots. I know exactly what that is. <clears throat> Thank you. I don't have any more questions. Um, continue that to uh, yeah, I'll back to the, uh, next, next time. Yeah. Thank you all very much. Thank you. All right. That's the end of uh, subdivision applications. Next, we have deliberations and termination. Uh, we do have one before us, a draft of an approval. Oh, 
Well, actually, let's first do the um, draft of the approval on the uh, SCP for the uh, 165, 165. 1565 return pack. That's about every number, but the right one. 1565 return pack. That's the um, hearing that we just closed. Uh, <clears throat> The, the event Stevens. space down at Stevenson. Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve SCP 2023 05 file 1653A 156 1565. I did the same term as rapid. Second. Okay, Chair has the motion and a second. Discussion. <coughs> Any discussion? Go over. Over. It's pretty straightforward. <laughs> Go over, but is there any discussion? It's pretty. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, uh, at the uh, public hearing, uh, it was indicated that the applicant uh, would have no more than 50 occupants to fire marshal. Restricted that in his, his uh, report. <clears throat> hours of operation Monday through Sunday with hours of 10 a.m. to 1130. Uh, no kitchen facility will be installed and no alcohol consumption. Applicant will provide security for all events. Lease space will be using a shared bathroom. As the commission uh, remembers, there are three individual spaces along the front of that old, uh, older building. Uh, church on the extreme left, uh, unoccupied space in the middle, and the special event on the right. And Mr. Chairman, who will be uh, sitting in tonight for uh, Dominic? Dominic Smergolino. Okay. Any questions? All right. Then we'll call the roll, starting with Dominic. Smergolino, yes. Condon, yes. O'Reilly, yes. Maini, yes. Okay. The um, special exception permit is approved. Congratulations. Congratulations. Welcome. Moving on, we have the second SCP, 2023-03. This is Pondview. We also have a draft approval before us. Um, this one I'm sure you are all very familiar with. Never heard of it. So, um, do you want to review this one? Yeah, Mr. Chairman. This salient points. Uh, staff just wants to start off by indicating and reminding the commissioners this whole uh, concept and now development was a 20 year work in progress. The current POCD and the two previous POCDs. The only thing different with the 2021 POCD, the commission actually did a survey and the survey came back to the commission with the following recommendations to this commission. Uh, a variety of housing uh, types are needed. Uh, apartment type units are needed, both for uh, empty nesters and for young professionals. And one of the most important things was to please put it in the appropriate areas. And also our uh, uh, the uh, affordable housing plan, which we adopted last year, we uh, recognized uh, three sites, and this is one of the three. So we have two strong long-term planning documents <clears throat> that recommended this type of uh, land use. So it, it is coming to fruition after your uh, vote. But it's important to note that a lot of thought went, uh, went into this uh, because this is a major uh, leap in faith uh, for this commission and the town. Um, I, I witnessed this in Shelton in the 90s with the uh, redevelopment, not only downtown, but they uh, uh, allowed it on parts of uh, Bridgeport Avenue. But uh, it is a significant uh, land use decision and having said that, I'll now go into the uh, document. Um, before you start that, I just have a quick question. Did they did they do that fencing that, that Leon spoke about? Yes, Mr. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, for the record, that was installed the uh, next day. Thank you. 
uh, SCP-23-03 special exception permit. <clears throat> and also what I forgot to, to mention, this is the very first uh, special design district number one. Uh, once again, another planning recommendation for this commission to provide alternative, how, uh, alternative zoning uh, techniques to uh, accommodate the market that is providing different types of uses that the older zoning did not uh, 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 handle uh, well. So uh, not only did you uh, consider the, the multifamily in specific areas of the town, you also know needed uh, the new zoning technique, which you did adopt. The MDD is the Main Street Design District overlay, which recognizes all of Route 25, commercial areas of 111 and commercial areas of Route 34. This is the very first SDD zone change that you uh, have adopted. The commission is going to be re having a hearing on the second one, the old Vichay property uh, at the corner of Victory uh, uh, and uh, Main Street. So uh, it is a zoning tool if properly controlled and so far, this commission is scrutinizing it because it, it can be misused. Uh, so having said that, <clears throat> the specs exception is for seven apartment buildings for a total of 196 dwelling units. <clears throat> that evolved because the commission indicated they wanted uh, elevators. And we went through a whole evolution <clears throat> modification to the standards and ultimately the uh, site development plans. Consisting of 20 affordable housing rental units, once again, you're fulfilling the recommendation of the POCD and the affordable housing plan. Uh, clubhouse pool area with a pool house, maintenance building, and four detached garages, fence dog park, outdoor recreation area for tenants, and on-site parking on a 19.6 acre site. The detached garages is something very new in the region. Once again, this project has been uh, uh, being elevated to a higher level of uh, construction. Property, is, as the commission knows, is currently zoned STD number one with an DD overlay district. Property will serve, serve private subsurface septic system and public water supply. Primary site access is provided to Main Street Route 22 with the secondary access to Judd, Judd Road via an easement through the adjoining commercial property to the north. Uh, applicant and staff has discussed the proposal with the Fire Marshal Police Department and Superintendent of Schools, especially with this new zone. <laughs> the commission has instructed staff to work with all the departments and the uh, Board of Ed. Uh, applications received in the wetlands approve it, approval. Application was uh, published in accordance with statute. Public hearing opened on March 2nd, closed on April 6th. During the review, the commission noted the following. Applicant has incorporated all the development changes reflecting the amendment to the statement of uses and standards. Applicant has provided additional on-site parking including the construction of four detached garage buildings with 42 garage spaces to accommodate the increased number of dwelling units. Additionally, the applicant has provided plans for additional parking if deemed necessary. That will have to come back before the commissioner because obviously it's going into the green area and you want to make sure that that works correctly. Applicants submitted a traffic impact assessment and updated development impact analysis as part of this submission. Applicant reconfirmed to the commission that the applicant will be the oversight agency for the affordable housing units 20 in this development to ensure compliance with annual reporting and income verification. Towns with housing authorities that have staff usually take that responsibility. We do not have that ability here. So the uh, onus is on the uh, applicant. 
Uh, and Mr. Chairman, uh, the conditions, stipulations, final site development plans shall incorporate all the uh, revisions prior to the sign off by the chairman. Applicant shall be the oversight agency for the 20 affordable housing. The project shall be developed in accordance with the adopted statement of uses and standards. Applicants shall provide adequate signage on the primary access drive, identifying access to the secondary travel way that was brought up by the commission. We want motorists to use that secondary instead of waiting, especially if they want to take a left-hand turn. Uh, adherence to the town engineer report dated March 14th, including the posting of the bond. And with that, Mr. Chairman, uh, a motion and a second. Uh, okay, we'll entertain a motion. Hold on. Hold on. We can discuss it after the motion. Oh, we could do that then. I make a motion to accept SCP 2023-03 file 1651A127 Main Street. Okay, you have a motion. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Yeah, Rick. <laughs> on this. We Derek, we talked about putting the fence on the back side of the. Oh, the fence, yeah. The, we have on the back side of the building. Not on there. Oh, the, for the, in the fall zone. In the fall zone. The fall zone, yeah. I thought we talked about screening the whole top of the property. And in, in screening, the, yes. So provide uh, fall zone and fencing. An entire perimeter. Yeah, but the fall zone fencing, the, the trees were in front of the fall. With, with landscaping. Landscaping, right. With landscaping. And then there was uh, a, a, a space for them to go, right? Or somewhere to clean it out. out. Right. Yeah, our gates to, uh, yeah. And then uh, we have in there about the easement for the, for the road behind it, the little driveway. Yeah. And, uh, I know that they said they were going to do that, but you're going to have that on there. And I, I, I also put in here dark, dark sky compliant. Remember the, yeah. the lighting is. Yeah. That's pretty. And they are providing the sidewalk along uh, 25. Correct. And I thought he was going to put up some signage to like direct them to that road. Yeah, yeah. I just think. Uh, yeah, it's in there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I saw that. All right. Man. What were you talking about? The screen, in, the screen where? Up top? Up on top, there was an open spot. Remember, it was a big open spot. But it was spot. an open spot to more there was a, wood. To, to, to know what was in wood. I thought he was going to screen it anyway. No, oh, they're putting yeah. extra screening where the front of the residence. Lives. Yes. Yeah. That was the important part. There's a thing screened up there. Yeah. All right, then we'll call the roll starting on my right. Ermelino, yes. Condon, yes. Mosey, yes. Riley, yes. Maney, yes. Yeah, motion passes. CP 2023-03 is approved. <coughs> okay, next on the agenda. We have... Um... Okay, we have some big applications coming in, Mr. Chairman, under new applications. This one is in front of you. Take it home and read it. This is zone change for um, 1036 Main Street. This is going to be in our second STD. Uh, and at 36. Please note on the plan, no driveway cut to Victoria. No, Vic. no uh, a driveway cut to the private road that goes to Amazon. It's all access from Main Street. Right. Okay. Secondly, both property owners have indicated they are willing to connect. We got to get that connection from uh, Mitch's shopping center to the south to this you property. Bike trail? No, interconnection for uh, oh, for traffic. For traffic. Okay. No. So we'll talk about that. But that, that's so. Please look at it when you're when you're looking at the plans. All right. So we have uh, two sets of meeting minutes here to get through. It's three, right? Okay. Six, March sixteenth. Second. There are three. Very good. 
All right. right. So let's start with a motion for March the second. Make a motion to approve March the second minute meetings as drafted. I have a motion. Need a second. Second from Rosie. Motion and a second. Any discussion or changes? If not, all well, starting on my right. Smoglino, yes. Condon, yes. O'Reilly, yes. Rainey, yes. And it's of March 2nd, passed. Next, we have minutes of March the 16th. Shall we attend the motion to accept minutes of March 16th? March 16th? March 16th. Yeah. Uh, got him. Got Motion to accept the meeting minutes of March 16 as drafted. Motion. Second. Um, motion and a second. Any discussion? I will call the roll starting on my right. Smear, we know yes. Alden, yes. Rosie, yes. Riley, yes. Maney, yes. Minutes. March 16. They are accepted. And finally, we have the minutes of April the 6th. I will obtain a motion to accept. April 6th. Motion to accept the meeting minutes of April 6th as drafted. Motion. Second. 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 Any discussion? April 6th. If not, all the votes starting on my right. Smirkling, no yes. Condon, yes. The votes are yes. All right. Yes. Rainy, yes. Motion passed. Meeting minutes have been accepted. Moving along, zoning and planning matters. Uh, have to set a date for our next sub subcommittee meeting. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I was looking at my schedule and I have a couple conflicts. Uh, May 20th works for me. Hopefully, it'll work for the subcommittee. I'm That's in. A That's a Saturday. Is it really? I'm out. One second. Why? What do you do on Saturday? I've been to work. I'm a reverend now. Yeah, you can do it online. Oh, yeah, I know some else. 18th, then. <laughs> what are we, May 18th? Thursday. It's May 18th, Ryan. Thursday. Can you get on the 2023 calendar, please? 22nd. 15, 22, 29. What do you want? We want. Memorial Day is 29. 15 or 22. It could be bicentennial. Thing. We should do it now. Some committee meeting now. Now. Yeah. Don't know. Uh, 15th, Mr. Chairman. All right. How does 15th look to amazing fellow members? Beautiful. I'll take it. May 15th. May 2023. Motion to approve. Thank you. All right. Mr. Chairman, two more things. Go ahead. Uh, CEO Cheryl's report, she couldn't make it because of uh, uh, April break with her kids. Uh, she will be here at the May 4th meeting for her report. And SAFE will also be doing uh, their report on 64 Cambridge. Been here like eight yeah, we've been waiting for that. That keeps getting bumped. They did wetlands and then we had conflicts. Yeah. All right. Okay. Anything else, Rick? That is it, Mr. Chairman. Um, are there any commissioner reports? Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 And I was always opposed. Passes. Or adjourn.